بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum, welcome to another episode of Out of Focus. In life we aspire for many different things and we work hard for it, whether that's fame, money, good and easy life, to be loved, respected and intelligence. And today inshallah we are going to focus on this aspect of intelligence because these are the things that we measure people in our society by and we measure also ourselves by. Joining us today is Sister Taiba. Assalamu alaikum so Sister Tabor, uh, to begin, I wanted to focus on intelligence today. Um, there's interesting hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he said, the intelligent person is the one who evaluates himself and acts for what comes after death. And the fool is the one who follows his nafs and anyhow he likes and then he hopes in Allah with wishful thinking. How can we understand this hadith? Well, the first thing I got from this hadith is that Islam actually has um, an, a view on intelligence. So a lot of things, sorry, what we get from society is that, you know, Islam and religion in general doesn't really value education or knowledge or intelligence or anything of that sort. Mm. But what this hadith, uh, you know, clearly shows that actually Islam does have a view on intelligence and it's quite different to how society um, views intelligence. So, you know, ever since, you know, we were little kids for as far back as we can remember, we were always encouraged to get good grades. So whether that was, you know, stats and then when we went into secondary school, we were taught to get, you know, the best GCSEs. Yeah. Uh, and then when we went into college, you know, we were encouraged to get the best A-level grades, you know, as if our family's honour was on the line. Um, and even now that I'm at uni, you know, um, you know, we're encouraged to get uh, you know, f first class degrees, yeah? yeah? So, what society teaches us is that intelligence equals academia. So, you, you go into the education system and you come out with the best grades. But what Islam teaches us is that, like you said, someone, uh, the intelligent person, the most intelligent person is the one who, you know, evaluates every action that they do. Um, they evaluate it and then they prepare for what's after death. So, it's, it's a stark contrast um, in comparison to what society teaches us. Sure, and when we speak about, you know, evaluating ourselves, what exactly does it mean to evaluate, you know, oneself? Okay, well, evaluation is like, um, evaluating yourself is like assessing yourself. Mm. And you can't assess anything, whether that's yourself or, uh, you know, a past paper that you do, without assessment guidelines. So if, if we use the example of a past paper, the way I and a lot of students, for example, prepare for our maths exams mm. is, in the run-up to the exams, we do past papers and then we compare our answers to the assessment guidelines. And the reason we do that is because the assessment guidelines is like, um, you know, the best answer. Yeah. So with time, we hope that our actions become more and more like the assessment guidelines. So if we were to link that back to Islam um, and assessing yourself, evaluating yourselves in accordance to Islam, that would be evaluating your actions and seeing if it matched up to Islam. And the reason we do that is because we're Muslim and we understand that actually, you know, uh, we came from Allah. So the only person who, um, who is able to tell us how to live in this life is Allah. And we understand that we're going back to Allah. So um, all of the actions that we do in this life will have implications. You know, it, it sounds really strange um, to hear about, you know, evaluating ourselves. And I guess that's why I asked that question, because, yeah, yeah we, we, we judge like everything. We judge our exam papers, we judge celebrities, we judge everything that we see and everyone that we see around us. But we don't really judge our own selves. Yeah. Um, and I guess in some sense, it's because of the kind of society we're living in, yeah. um, where we're not really, you know, where you mentioned that we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we came from him, that yeah. he, he created us, essentially. Yeah. Um, and that we were going to return to him because we know we're not going to live in this life forever. And we recognize that, so we refer back to Allah in all, all the things that we do, just like we refer to the mark scheme, because yeah. that has the best answer. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the best answer. But this kind of thinking isn't what we have in society, and that's because of the society we live in doesn't really care the fact that we came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and doesn't really care the fact that we're going to return to Allah. Instead, the message that's given out through like uh, the TV, um, basically any form of media and everything we look at to be honest yeah. is like enjoy yourself live your life however you want maximize your happiness without really giving consideration to any like purpose that you have 
Um, and it's completely contradictory to the way that Islam teaches us to think deeply about our lives. Um, so recently I saw this advert where it said, look, don't follow, don't follow rules. We don't follow rules. We make our own and we define our own. And this kind of thinking, it sounds all like, yeah, you know, it's cool. Like, I make my own rules and I do what I like. But really and truly, it means that no one, it, it basically ignores the fact that there is a sense of accountability to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that there is a guideline by the one who created you and you didn't make yourself. And there is an answer that you have to give at the end of this life. Um, and it doesn't have this thinking. So it's, it's very, very different to um, Islam. Uh, do you have anything a to add to that? Um, you mentioned that we live in a society that doesn't actually, uh, it doesn't care about where we came from or where, where we're going to. And um, just to touch on your point, it's because we live in a society that doesn't actually encourage active thinking mm -hmm. about what we're doing here, where we came from and where we're going. Whereas for the Muslim, you know, Allah, uh, you know, countless um, ayat in the Quran where Allah encourages us, you know, um, to think about what we're doing here and the implications of where we came from and, you know, the result of that being where we're going to. Sure. Um, it sounds like a really, like, I guess coming off from that, yeah. um, a silly question to ask, but what is the kind of use of thinking about our life um, deeply? Um, well, I would say by us evaluating ourselves, mm -hmm. we can find areas where we can improve. And the reason that's important is because we're Muslim and, you know, Allah encourages us to, you know, uh, seek ihsan, to seek excellence in every area of our life. And that's because, you know, we shouldn't be satisfied with, for example, just um, striving for Jannah. We should want al Jannah til firdaus. Another uh, point, too, would be another reason why we should... Just quickly coming yeah. off from that, sorry, um, is, you know, like... What you said about we want the best results, like we don't just want Jannah, we want Jannah to Fardo. So yeah. we might say even a higher thing would be just the pleasure of Allah is, is what we're really trying to achieve. So we yeah. try to mm -hmm. obey Him in all aspects. It's pretty much like our exam paper. You don't just say, okay, you know, I got like 50% of the you know, mark scheme and I'm just going to leave it at that. You try to, you know, you keep evaluating yourself and try to get 100% so that when you go into exam, you know, you've done the best that you can. And that's yeah. the point, like there is a better. It's not just that you live your life and, and do whatever you like. Yeah. Um, so your, your second point. Um, another um, benefit, I would say, another advantage of evaluating yourself and your actions um, against Islam would be, you know, whatever you do in this life, the people around you, society is going to have an opinion. Mm. So they might encourage you or they might discourage you from you doing what you want. So a personal example would be, um, so we've had a lot of family weddings recently, so, um, but they're mixed weddings, right? So I... So Islamically, we're not allowed to go to mixed weddings. So mm. if I put my opinion forward, um, I find that people around me are telling me, you know, oh, just just go for it, just just go to them. So I so it causes me to doubt my opinion. So I need to now refer back to my reference point, my guideline, which is Islam, so that I'm confident enough to, you know, be sure of myself and understand that actually what I'm doing, although it's uh, perhaps abnormal and unusual to the people around me and the society that I live in, I'm actually doing the correct thing. Um, and I think that's particularly important because um, especially when you're talking to people who actually don't refer to Islam themselves. Yeah. Sorry, themselves. Um, yeah. Yeah, sure. And I think um, to add from that is also like sometimes it's not just people around us that that can tell us like their opinion and then we take it from them rather than our criteria. Yeah. We can also end up fooling ourselves. So I I'll give you a personal example. Mm -hmm. And it's not really to do with the deen, but just about criteria and how, how we should refer back to the crit criteria rather than our own thinking or even our friend's approval. So I had this assignment that I had to hand in. And um, everyone that read it, like all my friends, they're really nice. Um, but that didn't really help me at that time because <laughs> I needed real you know, opinions. Um, but they all said, you know, this is really, really good. and in my own head, I thought it was really, really good. Yeah. Um, but then obviously I handed it in and my teacher didn't say the same. He actually graded it really low. So I realised that in that context, it, I guess that was a lesson for me that not all the time do even what you think is really good turns out to be the correct. Because there is a criteria. My exam paper had a criteria written. There was guidelines. There was a way to get marks that I hadn't fulfilled. So just like that with ourselves, we are created and that we will have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is a criteria for us to live by in all aspects of our lives. So everything we do, before we do it, like it's not good enough for me to like go in the exams, do my exam, then come out and then look at past papers. Like what's the point of that? Yeah. There's, there's no use. So just like that, there's no point of us doing actions 
and then thinking, oh, you know, what was I supposed to do? Does Islam justify this? It's actually, well, before we do our actions, we have to think, okay, is there a uh, ruling on this? Does Al what is Allah's opinion on this? Does he like it? Does he dislike it? Uh, and these are the questions we actually definitely need to ask ourselves if we realize that we are from Allah and we're, we're returning back to him. Um, sorry, any other point you want to add to that? No, really. Okay, inshallah. Um, there was actually another point I wanted to add. Um, and that's basically an example of um, one of the Sahaba. So he, so, so it goes back to, you know, even our thinking should be in line with Islam. So it's not just um, our actions, but also our thinking. So for example, maybe our friends and the people that we're around, they don't like X, Y person. Okay. Um, and we, because we're in that environment, we also say, okay, we don't like them and we fall into gossiping or we have this uh, negative uh, uh, thinking associated to that person. Um, and it's not really correct for us to do that because Islam actually doesn't allow you, know, you to be suspicious or negative towards people, especially without a valid reason, like they haven't done anything un-Islamic. Again, we believe that you hate the act, but usually not the person. Um, so in that context, uh, this is like our reaction, but there's a really beautiful hadith, uh, narration of Ali radiallahu anhu. Um, basically, he was on the battlefield and this man he was obviously at war with um, mm. spat in his face. Um, and so he went back, to th he was walking back and then obviously he turned around. Uh, the the tr guy tried to come on him again and then he um, ended him. Um, and so the Sahaba asked, the Sahaba saw this incident, they were really confused. And they asked, you know, like, what, what's going on there? Uh, one minute you were like walking away, the next minute you ended him. Um, you know, what happened there? So he said, look, when, they, when he... When I first was walking away from him and I had him in front of me, yeah. he spat in my face and if I reacted to him, then it would have been out of my own like ego, it would have been out of my own pride, like I wouldn't be able to assess myself. But the second time I knew I only did it for Allah's sake. And this is the kind of thinking we should have because it's not, I guess it comes with two parts, like this issue of referring back to Islam. One is that you're sincere in your own thinking. So it requires you to do the actions only for Allah's sake, so not because your family are going to like it, your yeah. friends are going to approve of it, but only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because yeah, we know that actions that aren't done for Allah's sake are rejected anyway. So. Exactly. And the second part is that you have to ask yourself, well, is my action in line with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? Um, so sometimes we might hear, like we might be in class um, and yeah. we hear like our, maybe even our teacher uh, say something about Islam that we know is wrong. Mm -hmm. And then we, we can just sit back and just, you know, take it as a class, it's just a lesson. I'm not really going to say anything, otherwise, uh, you know, the teacher might not like me. So that's our own benefit that we're thinking of. Um, and in this society, that's what we encourage, like, go with what you feel is good for you, right? Or we can think, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, he's going to account me, he knows my actions now, and he's going to account me for this action. So am I doing, like, am I thinking of Allah or am I just thinking of myself? And so you're thinking their changes and you actually speak out against something that you hear that's wrong, whether it's about Islam or even the next person that's sitting next to you because we believe in justice from Islam. Um, so those are some examples that I thought of when I, when I read this hadith. Um, what are some of the things like a person can conclude from yeah. self-evaluation? Okay, after self-evaluating, you should be able to, or you should try to identify areas where you, know, you could improve on. And because we live in, you know, we're living such busy lives, and w on top of that, we live in a society that doesn't really encourage thinking or self-evaluation of any sort. Um, we should really, as Muslims, allocate, you know, a time in the day or maybe at night time, um, where we can sit, you know, sit down, lay down, and just think about, you know, what did we do in our day? What did we do in that day? And did we do any actions that were actually, you know, contradicting Islam? I think that's one piece of advice. The second one would be, you know, just um, keep in mind the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is that, you know, we're human beings um, and we're limited, which means one day we are, you know, we're going to pass away. And that has implications because we know that once we pass away, you know, there's going to be the day, of, um, the day of reckoning where we're accounted for all our actions. Sure, I think, uh, alhamdulillah, that's, that's such an important point because, and I think that's something we can all relate to. Yeah. Like the first uh, point that you gave, which is equally important, um, it's more of a personal kind of thing where you, you as an individual have to sit and really reflect on these issues that about your own life because we all have different realities. Um, 
And so we have to think about, well, d do these realities fit in line with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Like the example you gave about going to a family wedding um, or any other example, to be honest, whether you're buying something or selling something, whatever you're doing, we have to think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and that's something that before you actually act on it, before you make, you do the action, we should think like, you did, like in terms of going to a family wedding before you went, you thought about it, right? Yeah. Um, and also after, because, you know, at the end of the day, we all sin. Yeah. Um, and so we have to kind of sit down, allocate a time and really think about, okay, what did I do? And then we repent for that. This is a part of Islam. Yeah. Um, and so we repent for that and we renew our intentions and we create that relationship with Allah. And that's, uh, in some sense, a personal journey and it's something that we have to take. Um, and then again, on the bigger picture, it's, Something that we can all relate to is the fact that we are going to a pass away. And the way I try to see it is like, um, well, I picture a sunset, but I guess, uh, and I picture a sunset, I'll tell you why in a bit. But I guess the, the bare way of saying it is um, everything we look around, like right now, it's not going to last. And if we just really take a moment to actually reflect on everything, every single thing that we look at right now, is disappearing uh, as we speak essentially and that includes us um, as, as people as human beings um, and we know that that we hear it all the time we hear someone's died we hear whether it's elder or younger and we these are reminders for us to actually realize wait subhanallah like everything around me is telling me that I'm going to come to an end yeah. um, and so we should really understand this and take this as a message for us to renew our intentions and link our, our all our actions back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so jazakallah khair for oh, oh, this uh, excellent, um, alhamdulillah, uh, reflection on this hadith. Um, and just to conclude with our viewers, um, just as we aspire for the best marks in our exams and we look to the criteria, we should also look to our own criteria for our lives as Muslims. And we should look to Islam for all of our actions not just personal, but on a commun communal basis as well. We should always refer to Islam for all of our actions before we commit them. And then after we've done it, we should also reflect on whether they are in line with Islam or not. Jazakallah khair for joining us today. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.